Do you know what it takes to be a county commissioner? Find out next on Inside St. Lucie. Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside St. Lucie, SLC-TV's monthly government affairs show. I'm your host, Eric Gill, Communications Division Director here for St. Lucie County. And on today's show, we're going to talk about what it takes to be a county commissioner with my guest, St. Lucie County Commissioner for District 5, Kathy Townsend. But before we meet our guest, here's some upcoming events and announcements from the Board of County Commission. Early voting for the August 28th primary election will be held Saturday, August 18th through Saturday, August 25th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at five locations throughout St. Lucie County, including the Orange Blossom Business Center at 4132 Okeechobee Road in Fort Pierce, the Zora Neale Hurston Branch Library at 3008 Avenue D in Fort Pierce, the Port St. Lucie Community Center at 2195 Southeast Oroso Boulevard in Port St. Lucie, the Port St. Lucie Civic Center, 9221 Southeast Civic Center Place in Port St. Lucie, and the Paula Lewis Branch Library at 2950 Southwest Rosser Boulevard in Port St. Lucie. And you can find the League of Women Voters Candidate Forum airing on SLC TV throughout the month and on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash St. Lucie Gov. It's the last month for the opening of St. Lucie County Pools. The county operates three pools during the summer season. The Ravenswood Pool at 400 Southwest Ravenswood Lane in Port St. Lucie, the Lakewood Park Pool at 5990 Emerson Avenue in Fort Pierce, and the Lincoln Park Pool at 1311 Avenue M in Fort Pierce. For details about hours of operations, admission cost, and swim lessons, visit stlucieco.gov aquatics. The St. Lucie Mets are also wrapping up their summer season at First Data Field, located at 527 Northwest Peacock Boulevard in Port St. Lucie. Games are underway now through early September. Don't miss fun promotional nights such as Ladies Night and Dollar Nights. For tickets, call 772-871-2115 or visit stluciemets.com. Join us in the studio for covering the bases with the Mets on the third Monday of each month at noon. Featuring the Chamber of Commerce and the St. Lucie Mets, you can be a part of the live studio audience on the corner of Virginia Avenue and 25th Street and learn more about the important work nonprofits are doing here in St. Lucie County. Coffee with the Chair, hosted by the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce, is held on the fourth Friday of each month, starting at 8.30 a.m. in the SLC TV studios of the County Administration Complex on the old Civic Center side of the building, 2300 Virginia Avenue, Fort Pierce. Be sure to stop in for a hot cup of coffee and hear the latest news from the Chamber and the County. A reminder that the Board of County Commission meetings are held at 6 p.m. on the first Tuesday and at 9 a.m. on the third Tuesday in the County Commission Chambers of the Roger Portress Administration Annex, 2300 Virginia Avenue, Fort Pierce. The board typically holds an informal meeting on the second Tuesday at 9 a.m. in Conference Room 3. Now for the latest updates about all St. Lucie County Commission meetings, workshops, and events, be sure to visit our website at stlucieco.gov and click on our comprehensive calendar located in the bottom right-hand corner of the page. And if you'd like to be added to our press release distribution list, send us an email at slctv at stlucieco.org. We also hope you'll follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're going to take a quick break. Before we do, we're going to check in with the latest economic development stats with another St. Lucie Works. The bed tax revenue dropped slightly compared to last year. St. Lucie County's bed tax collection fell by 4.5% in May of this year compared to 2017. But overall, revenue remains ahead of the previous year. Overall building activity increased in May by 11% compared to April with 965 permits being submitted. Revenue for that time frame was up with a total of $261,000. The housing market remained strong. According to the Florida Realtors Association, the average median home sale price in April was nearly $223,000, up 8.8% from last year, while condos decreased in value by 7.5% with a median price at $194,500. St. Lucie County's unemployment rate dropped again slightly in May to 4% compared to April's 4.1% and down from last May's 4.9%. Statewide, the unemployment rate fell to 3.8%. There were 2,500 more jobs on the Treasure Coast compared to last year, with the largest gains in retail with 600, leisure and hospitality with 500, and government with 400. If you work for a local business looking for skilled or trained labor, be sure to contact the staff at CareerSource as they can assist your company with its recruitment and training needs. 
And if you're an individual looking for a new job, they can help you as well. Visit the Career Source online at careersourcerc.com or call one 855 for you to hire. My name is Miguel Sendejas. I'm an RN at Five South Orthopedics. It's the perfect field if you want a secure job. Everybody's getting older, everybody needs help at one time on their lives. My sister was the reason why I became an RN, because she was going back to school, so I was like, well, you know what, I'm gonna go back with her. You do your AA and then you go to the RN program. It's kind of hard for a new RN to start working, especially at the hospital, but here at Indian River Medical Center, the intern program actually squeezes you in, so you have a little bit easier access to, to actually getting a job at the hospital. All the schooling, all the information you learn in the program made me believe that I was like, oh, I can actually do this myself. I think you have to be a special kind of person to be in this field. You have to be good with people. You have to like people and enjoy being around them. When people come into the floor, they're in pain. Usually, you can actually do something for them. You can actually make them feel better and be able to allow them to get through this phase. It makes our day better, knowing that you did something positive for somebody. Just in the healthcare itself, there's so many places you can go. You can be actually in the floor taking care of the patients. You can go into managing. You can find somewhere where you will fit in. And this field is just growing because everybody's basically branching off into different sections, which makes it a perfect place to find a job anywhere. Welcome back to Inside St. Lucie. I'm your host, Derek Gill, and I'm joined by St. Lucie County Commissioner Kathy Townsend. Commissioner, thank you so much for joining me once again. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. And you're the Commissioner for District 5. Correct. For those that don't know, in St. Lucie County, District 5 is essentially, you, I think you have the biggest landmass, but population-wise, it's the same. No. It, no? Is, the, I, it is the biggest landmass no. because I'm the C. Yeah. Um, and comparable in population, I am right up there with everybody else yeah, they because kind of, of tradition. Traditions in my district, and tradition is very populated. Yes. And because of that, with the North Beach and the Lakewood, Lakewood Park, Park area, corridor, yep. PGA Village, I have a lot of high density areas. There's, yeah. And for those that don't know, commissioners, you run for a district, but you're elected countywide. So everybody, you know, we have an election coming up, and we have two seats up, and people, no matter where you live, as long as you're a registered voter in St. Louis County, you can vote in both those districts, or for both those districts. That's correct. We, everybody votes at large. Yeah. So you, you have to live in the district that you represent, that you run for. You don't have to live there when you run, but if you win, you, you have move to move there. there. And everybody is at large. So everybody votes for all five of us. Right now, currently, we have two and four. four. The even years are with the governor race. The odd years are with the president. presidential. Yeah. And so, and congratulations to you. You recently completed the Florida Association of Counties Certified County Commissioner that's, course. That's correct. And you did that in your first two years. And they usually say it takes anywhere from 12 to 18 months to complete this thing. Was it, was it tough? It, it wasn't tough because we don't take a state exam or anything. Okay. Yeah, no, it wasn't like that. But it is, it is a commitment. It's a lot of hours and, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of um, traveling and going to classes and everything. And, yes, I did it in my first year, and I was surprised to see the statistics. So out of 67 counties, every county has five or more commissioners. And through the whole certification process that the Florida Association of Counties has been doing this, in the class I graduated in, I think we were like 469 certified county commissioners. Wow out of the thousands yeah. that have been elected to office. So they say that it generally takes two terms to do it. Wow. And, I, and um, I, yes, I did it along with uh, Commissioner Adams in Indian River County. Okay. We kind of, that's one of the, the great things about the program is we met. We were both newly elected, and we met going to the conference, and we just um, partnered with one another, and we became roommates, and we would go to the 
you know, meetings and everything together, and yeah. we, um, we did it in our first year. Nice. Was there something you picked up out of the course that surprised you or you didn't realize, or, or was it just the benefit of getting to talk to some other elected officials around the state and seeing yeah. that they're all going through the same problems? No, it's very beneficial. Um, I, I had no government background. I was a planning and zoning commissioner, and that was my background in government outside the controversial things I had with my business. So, yeah, so I, I, that's why I was so committed to this, because I wanted to go and I wanted to learn about the different departments of government, what the expectations of a commissioner was supposed to be, and I wanted to be able to have relationships with other commissioners in other counties, especially our neighboring counties, Okeechobee, Indian River, and Martin. And so um, I have a great relationship with Okeechobee County. I know all those commissioners, two of them I've become very close to through FAC, and the um, Commissioner Adams, and two other commissioners in Indian River, uh, Peter, I, I love and adore as well. So if I have questions or they have questions or we're looking at something that they're going to be addressing, we kind of bounce stuff off one another. And I wouldn't have had that opportunity had I not went to those classes and met them. I'm also very friendly with the commissioner in Nassau County, Commissioner Spicer. Love him, adore him. And there were some issues that they had coming up that we had already had. And so we kind of talked about that. So. I felt it was very, very beneficial to me to go and to learn what the other communities were doing, as well as Volusia County, uh, two of the commissioners there I have become friends with. And um, one of the biggest things is we lead, St. Lucie County leads, with our landfill. And so I know that I get a lot of questions based on our landfill when I go to these um, when I go to these meetings and stuff, a lot of the other commissioners approach me about our landfill, like, how do you do it and make money? We're losing money. What do you yeah. do to make money? And they're always interested in what we do in our recycling and what we do with our landfill because we seem to be ahead of most counties. Yeah, and I'm sure there's opportunities too in building those relationships when, like Volusia, they experienced a lot of damage from Matthew and hur hurricanes at Matthew and Irma, just like us, and how they uh, recover and go through the FEMA mm -hmm. process. And, what and every county has their own challenges. Um, you know, one of the things that's great about St. Lucie County and unique about us is the fact that we have a lot of nonprofits here. We have um, a lot of indigent people, we have low income, and our average income is low, and so we're always challenged to let some of the higher end stores, like Trader Joe's, my favorite, I keep rattling, come on Trader Joe's, but, um, you know, we're not the richest county in, in the state, and so we really depend on our nonprofits, and a lot of the other counties have nonprofits, but the county government doesn't have to fund them the way that we have to really fund a lot of ours. And the one thing about this community is whenever there's a need and a cause, they rally and mm -hmm. the community comes together and people really support one another. And that's yeah. what I love most about us. So. And it is, you mentioned the nonprofits, it's a twofold system. You know, we use some of the excess revenues we get back from the tax mm -hmm. collector to put back into the nonprofits, but the county's also stepped up and partnered with United Way and a big mm -hmm. golf tournament and Chili Cook-Off, <laughs> you know, Commissioner Bars was the chair of this year. Yeah, and 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 we I led think, the fundraising effort I there. I think, like, also this year, the board kind of took a different approach with nonprofits. So instead of just funding them, we're doing challenge grants. Challenge grants. So it's no longer we're going to give you 100000 So we have found a way this year, I think, to try to stay within budget, uh, the expectations that I think everybody has on one another and yourself and your staff, and government needs to, you know, follow those same standards. So in order to try to keep the millage rate the same and in order to hold everybody accountable, we have challenged the nonprofits that we're going to give you this, but it's matched. So sure. we're going to give you 150, you raise 150, you have your money. Yeah, and still provide the services. And still provide there. the yeah. services, yeah. yes. Well, let's talk about an average day for a county commissioner. I'm sure it's, you have five different commissioners and they all <laughs> have a different schedule and a way they approach things, but for you as a county commissioner, because I know you're heavily involved in nonprofits and fundraising events, and so what's a day in the life of a Commissioner Townsend? You know, er, I, I would say at least once a month I get asked, so what does a county commissioner do? And, and it's really amazing to me that the people that are really educated people that really don't even know what a commissioner does. So, of course, we, we regulate policy, like today at our meeting, you know, we decided on the millage rate and where we were going to go with the budget. But we also, we have to hold staff accountable for the funds that they have as well. So we have to meet, we have to make the budget with everybody. They come before us, we have the budget process. 
but we also have to go out there and if somebody's having an issue with their garbage, they can call the office and we can fix the garbage problem. If somebody is having a problem with Florida Power and Light and they're just not getting results with Florida Power and Light, they can call the office. We can have that conversation. If you are having a friend that wants to come here and develop and they go into planning and zoning um, and they're not feeling the love, which I, they should because we, we are putting things in place with our navigation and stuff. How, however, you know, there's always room for improvement and, mm -hmm. and I know that there's challenges. And so they need to know they can reach out to their commissioner. So if you contact your commissioner, which a lot of people don't understand that you can do that. Yeah. So um, I have an amazing aide. I don't want to say I have the best on the third floor, but I, 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 I really do. Don't let the other one go. Okay. But anyways, <laughs> um, so if I'm not in my office, Cindy is. Yeah. And Cindy takes it upon herself to be proactive and to have everything in place for the time I get into the office, and she will tell me the things that she's already done to do a lot of the legwork for me by the time I get there. And so now it's to the point that if it is a garbage issue or Florida Power and Light or something simple, even with staff or a code violation or code um, question that somebody calls in, she's already handled that before I even get into the office. Yeah. So she makes my job easier, and it takes a team. And so we, you know, like myself, I do um, HOA meetings. Mm -hmm. I go to the HOA meetings. I speak at HOAs. Um, there are people that have me in their house. They have, like, little coffee clutches in the morning, and they put a group of people together, and I go in, and I... I sit down and I talk with them, I, as you know, because um, you actually helped me with my blog, so thank you for that, but I did the library. Yes, no, and I was going to point that out. You, you've been proactive in, in getting out to the community. At least once a month, you're trying to get to the library and say, hey, Commissioner, talk. Right, and it's because Town, towns and talk. There's, people that, there's people that are not comfortable going into a setting of a, a room, public meeting, a public meeting, a dais, a podium, whatever, and so... I originally thought that if I go to the library and I sit there, I can catch up on some paperwork because it'll be quiet. However, I'm very glad that's not happened because every single time, including the first time I decided to do this, there's always been somebody, and it's turned into groups now. And now when I go, because it's being advertised, there's people waiting when I get there. Nice. And the, it's getting larger and larger and larger, and it's actually turning into groups. So I'm, I'm very happy with the outcome, and I hope it continues to grow and become stronger. And the um, Next step that I'm doing is I have been hopping on the bus, and I don't let the transit know when I'm going to do that. I just show up one day, me and Cindy, we decided to just get on the bus and go for a ride. About a week ago, I was at something in Port St. Lucie, and I grabbed one of the city commission council member, Morgan. Mm -hmm. Mike, have you ever been on our bus? And she's like, no. And I'm like, come on, let's go. So we actually got on the bus, went to tradition. We put it on Facebook. So now what I'm doing is I'm doing travels with Townsend. Okay. And I'm, I just randomly pick a morning, and I pick, hunt, a route. pick, I pick a route, I get on the bus, and I go. And now what I'm going to be implementing as of August 10th, which will be my next bus trip, I'm only putting that out there right now because I'm going to start having somebody in the community ride with me. Because I get a lot of um, questions about transit, like nobody ever rides our buses. Why do we do this? Sure. And so it's great to have conversations with them and let them understand. I have yet to be on a bus that did not have people on it, and they were all going to work. And I've been able to identify. So the bus trip that me and Council Member Morgan were on, I identified. We got off at Tradition, and I asked the bus driver, if I had to go to the hospital for a doctor's appointment or for a test, would I have to get off here and then cr you know, walk, walk back out through Tradition, cross Gatlin, yeah. to go over there? And he said yes. So, conversation, and um, now we're hopefully we're looking at having a, a stop at the hospital nice. so that people will be able to get on the bus and go straight to the, I mean, obviously, if you're going to the hospital, there's a problem. Sure. So, that, in my mind, would have been, like, a priority to have a stop there. Sure. I was really kind of surprised that we didn't. Yeah. You can go shopping, but you can't get to the hospital. <laughs> so, it's something that's being addressed, and that's how you identify things. So when you go out and, you're, and you go out into the community and you talk to the people that use the systems and the public services every day, you can identify what the needs are. And so mm -hmm. I'm having fun with it, and, and so I'm not going to say where my next trip's going to be or what bus station I'm getting on, okay. but I am going to be joined. Um, Councilwoman Morgan is going to be going with me, oh, nice. and um, we are taking Marisol. 
another young lady in the community that's a photographer. Mm -hmm. We're going to do some pictures this time around. And we're going to randomly go on Facebook Live. Okay. And you're going to like, 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 like. And then we're going to randomly walk up to somebody in one of the stores and have them pick a number. And whatever, if they say 32 and you're the 32nd like, mm -hmm. you're going to get a prize. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So I'm having fun with it. But, yeah. you know, as a commissioner, it, every commissioner is different. Sure. We all look at things differently. We all do things differently. I am involved in the community because I feel being out there and being a part of the people is how you identify the issues and their concerns. And you can answer questions. So, you know, for me, I think it's more effective being out there, going to the businesses, talking to their employees. So you go into a business, you meet them for lunch, you go in with a pizza or donuts in the morning, and they sit around, and they can just randomly ask me questions. And so that's catching on, too, yeah. um, for the businesses to know that I'm available and are having me come in and speak to staff. So a commissioner's job is more than just coming up here and being a part-time commissioner, sitting at a desk, going through meetings and going through budget. Yeah. There's a lot of other things. Yeah. I mean, like you, you know, you, the, 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 rate, the TV station here, you know, you needed the equipment and you had to submit it to your budget. We had to go in and see the need and if it was a priority. So yeah. you have to also, ha you have to nurse relationships with staff as well. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest misconception from the public? Because I, I know there have been times where I've seen emails to commissioners, you need to fire this judge or, you know, like, or, 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 or another constitutional officer, well, I, you know, it's. I think the biggest misconception that that people have they really don't understand what we can do so as a commissioner we answer to nobody except for the governor Voters. the governor is the only person that can fire True. us yeah. and on a day-to-day -day basis we answer to 320,000 residents yeah. of st lucie county they are our boss yeah. uh, they they put us here they give us the privilege of serving and being a public servant and being their voice and working with them so clearly that's who we work for sure. Other than that, um, we have no say-so over the Sheriff's Department, Supervisor of Elections, Tax Collector, Clerk judges. of Court, Judges. Yeah. We, we, we don't govern their offices. Again, they're elected. They run their own department. There's Florida statutes they follow. They are not policy makers. They don't set policy. As a commissioner, we do. But we don't set policies to their office. So the, the constitutional officers, their policies come down from Tallahassee. Sure. And it's Florida statute, and they follow that. The other misconception I think a lot of people have is they don't know the difference between a municipality and the county. Yeah. And so, or St. Lucie County. Yeah. <laughs> so, you have, so you have your county, yeah. and we are the county commissioner. However, we can't go into the city of Port St. Lucie and say to the city, we want you to have a sidewalk here or a bus stop here, or we want you to let the density on this street be this. So you have, that's why you have elected officials for the city. And so when you live in the city of Port St. Lucie or the city of Fort Pierce, or there's also the municipality of St. Lucie Village, mm -hmm. they have their own board. They set their own budget. They set their own millage rate for their city. So you have a county tax and you have a city tax. Yeah. And sometimes being in the unincorporated county, your taxes might be higher than living in the city of Port St. Lucie, depending on where you live, because you have mosquito control. You, sometimes you have uh, Fort Pierce Farms Water District, you have South Florida Water Management. So depending on the area of the unincorporated county you live in, depends on what taxing districts you have. And if you live in the city of Port St. Lucie, St. Lucie Village, or Fort Pierce, you also have a city tax. Yeah. And we, we don't dictate to that. We don't dictate to the judges. Yep. We only set the policy for the unincorporated county. Now, we do try to enter into agreements with the cities on things like um, the gas tax, the tourist bed tax. Uh, most recently, we were trying to have conversation with the school board in the cities to help outsource some funds for this, the new school resource office mandate that came down. I don't think anybody, elected or not, I don't think anybody ever would want to compromise public safety. And we have a great sheriff's department to do that, and the police department. So um, I just think people really don't understand the branch of government. We can't say to a council person, you need to do this or you need to do that. And we can't, we can't go to the school board and tell them that we need this. We can only be accountable to the things that we can 
role and ha have ordinance and policy. Yeah, it's interesting because in talking about the proposed sales tax and a message board on or on next door, somebody was saying, well, the school district raised the sales tax. Why don't you just take the money from the school district sales tax increase and use that for your roads? And we well, legally you, can't. It was voters can't. approved that just for capital needs for the school district. That's well, why we're. Well, but it's not only that. The, the school board has their own tax. And their own budget. The yeah. fire department has their own tax yeah. and their own budget. Yeah. Their budget does not come from the county. Yes. Except for the school board currently, the school resource officers in the schools, the county has stepped up to the plate, and we have been funding that for the school system. The school board has been, I think, committing four hundred or 500000 towards it. We have been putting in the rest of the funds. Other than that, though, we cannot take money from the school board. We can't yeah. take money from the fire district, nor can, you know, they dictate what we need to do for them. Sure. So, yes, that's true. And a lot of people think that even, yeah. I know that there, there's a lot of controversy right now with the discharges from Lake Okeechobee and the watersheds and the retention ponds, and people don't understand how that works. And so, you know, that's another whole conversation sure, for that's, another that's a whole four show. hour show to talk it, about it, the who owns the canal and where, where the well, canal it is goes. Because we and, have three. We have South Florida yeah. Water Management, yeah. Fort we Pierce have Fort Farms. Pierce Farms, we have the North Florida, Fort, North Fork Florida. Water District, yeah. and then we have South Florida Water Management. So yeah. we have all of those, and everything kind of wants to be blamed on Lake Okeechobee, and everything really generates from the north from Orlando coming out of the Kissimmee River. And so that's another whole conversation. Yeah. But we can't, we can't dictate when they're going to discharge the water that comes from the army corps of engineers yeah. and so i think it's just people don't really understand the branches of government and we are limited we can't tell dot what to do we no. can't tell army corps of engineers what to do we can have conversations sure, with them. sure. we do get funding from them sometimes yeah. from a from a state and a federal level but uh, we have to go in there and we have to ask and we have to have multiple conversations to get there so yeah. we are only we can only as a commissioner take care of day-to-day -day operations, garbage, road cleanup, sure. code enforcement, stuff The libraries, like that. the parks right. that we, because there are some services that the board provides to city residents that, like the libraries, for example, neither That's one county. of the cities pay for the libraries. Right. We have six branch libraries, including the new beautiful one we opened in Port <laughs> St. Lucie, that I was shocked though, though there's 100,000 people living within a five mile radius mm -hmm. of the new Paula Lewis Library. And you know what, that, so that's, um, that's a perfect example. I, I went to the ribbon cutting to that library. And, you know, there were so many people there, and it was just so quick. But having gone back and sat there and being able to speak with some of the residents, they're so grateful for that because they were actually traveling to Prima Vista to go to the library. And that's a well-populated neighborhood. And so that's, that is another example. So at the county, we do. We have the public pools, mm -hmm. which are in the cities, yep. except for Lakewood, Lakewood Park. Park. yeah. So, yeah, so the county... Services through our parks and rec, the parks, the pools, the libraries, miles of beaches. Yeah, the beaches and stuff like that. And that comes from the county budget. Yeah. It doesn't come from the city budget. Yeah. And so, and then the other thing is like in the city of Port St. Lucie, you have three roads in the city of Port St. Lucie that are county. You have Prima Vista, you have Walton Road, and... Becker, wasn't Becker? Well, Becker originally was county, county maybe right. now incorporated, so but yeah. those are county roads, but they're in the city of Port St. Lucie, and so a lot of times, kind of reverse happens there, where they want to blame the city on Prima Vista, and it's really a county road. Yeah. So I, it's And just, then you have, like, in Fort Pierce, where the, they incorporated the town, but not the road, or the, the, right. the street, but not the road. So we still maintain the road, but the people the that live in there, Pierce. they're paying city of Fort Pierce taxes. Yeah, so. the city of Fort Pierce, that's real common. Yeah. They're annexing into the city, but not taking over the roads, and we're still maintaining the roads. Yeah. So it's confusing to people, and I understand why it is confusing. Yeah. Um, I've been here two years, just about. And I've been here 15. I still don't know. So <laughs> I'm still trying, learning <laughs> yeah, every day. It, and it is. And yeah. so I understand why it's confusing. And yeah. so it's always great to engage in conversation with the people and, and explain to them what I do. Like, um, I've, I've been on talk radio. The, the radio stations have had me on a couple of times to do talk radio and yeah. stuff, too. So. It's about education. I think the more we get out, the more we communicate with the public, the more conversations we have, the more education and the more people are learning. Because the other thing is, you know, people go on to next door and they read something or they go onto Facebook and they read something and they take a percentage of what they're hearing from somebody and they don't research 
what all the facts yeah. are. And then they say something, and they say something, and they say something. Yeah. So, uh, again, I just always tell everybody, I'm, I'm happy to tell you what I know, and I don't know a whole lot, but I'm happy to tell you what yeah. I know, and if I don't know, I'll find out for you. Yeah. And so it's just not listening to everything you read in the newspaper, everything you see on the news. That's one of the challenges I've had, because even on some of the social media platforms, you try to give information, and I've had people accuse mm -hmm. me of, you're just giving us excuses. Oh, okay, you can look at it that way, but I'm telling you what the facts are. We don't control that road, or we don't control that I've canal, that. or, yeah. I, I know I do, because I see what you put on next door. I see that, and, I, and you do a really good job at it. It depends on who you ask. No, this is true. <laughs> but you do a good job at, at trying to explain it to people, and it is difficult, because People are very passionate about things that they feel and they believe in, and I understand that. Yeah. It, that's, that's how we succeed. Life is built on compromise. Yeah. But it's being able to be optimistic and open-minded and saying, explain to me why you're saying that because you're right. They don't understand. So you are putting it out there without trying to write a book <laughs> to explain why, sure. and then they're just blasting you back. Instead yeah. of saying, well, explain to me what you mean because you're right. People like South Beach. South Beach is a city of four piers yep. till you get to a certain point. Yep. From Ocean Village South, south it's all it county. becomes county. And so there's people that live on South Beach that when you post something on next door, I see it more so on South Beach, yeah. I think, in your next door post. Because that's uh, where I live, too. Yes, they, they don't <laughs> understand that that's the city of Fort Pierce. And you're right, I see that comment a lot, that you're just passing the buck. Well, we're not passing the buck. It's the city of Fort Pierce. This is a conversation to have with the city, yeah. not us. And then you have areas like, Gen like south of the power plant. Mm -hmm. tech it's listed as Jensen Beach which is not Martin County, that part is still St. Lucie County, and then people get confused that and, way, too. And see, and people ask, I actually get that asked to me a lot, as to why is something in the boundaries of St. Lucie, mm -hmm. yet they have a Jensen Beach address. Yeah. And so that's a perfect example. If ask somebody, and you might get five different answers, but the truth of the matter is, they're so far removed from the closest mail route that they were given a Jensen Beach address and service from the Jensen Beach post, post office, office because the mail carrier was right there and it abutted up to Jensen Beach. Yeah. So it made sense from the post office perspective to have that carrier stay right there within that boundary rather than having to put a carrier on yeah. to come 10 miles south from to service like Pierce. Nettles Isle. Yeah, That's yeah. a perfect example. Yeah. And so again, it's a real simple solution we understand that, but from the perspective of the community, they, they don't. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, Commissioner, we're running short on time. Is there anything we didn't get to mention uh, about the district or the upcoming events that you want to promote or warn I, people about? No, I think we covered a lot. It's always a pleasure to do this show with you. And again, I, I, I love being out there in the community. And as Cindy and I have said, every, we do the HOA meetings yeah. and we go into the field and we're, we're able to showcase what the county does and the people that attend that meeting they're benefiting from it. Yeah. So again, I, I can't do this alone, and I depend on uh, the residents out there in St. Lucie County to call the office and email me, and if you see me in public, say something to me, because I'm here to try to fix things with you. So together, we are the team. So Absolutely. again, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks so much for Thanks. taking the time, Thank Commissioner. You. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap up the show. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Inside St. Lucie, and we hope you'll tune in again next month. If you have topics or subjects you'd like to see covered here on the program relating to St. Lucie County government, give us a call at 772-462-1791, or send us an email at slctv at stlucieco.org. And if you'd like to see previously aired episodes of this or other SLC TV programs, visit our YouTube page at youtube slash stlucie.gov. I'm your host, Eric Gill, and myself and the staff, thanks for watching.